Now that we have compared and contrasted interrupts and signals, let's see how we can visualize these concepts. We'll use again an illustration within a toy shop where we will try to make an analogy between an interrupt and a snowstorm warning and a signal and a battery slow warning. The reason for these two choices is to make it a little bit more similar with the interrupt being generated by an event that's external to the CPU, so an event that's external to the toy shop, whereas the signal is more generated from within, so the battery slow is directly caused by the toy shop worker fixing a toy. First, each of these types of warnings need to be handled in specific ways. Second, both of them can be ignored. And last, we can think about both of them as being expected or unexpected. In a toy shop, handling these types of events may be specified via safety protocols or certain hazard plans. This is not uncommon. There may be, however, situations in which it's appropriate to just continue working. And finally, situations like the fact that the battery died are pretty frequent. They happen regularly, so they're expected. Whether or not it is expected for a snowstorm to occur, that will really depend on where the toy shop actually is. If we think about interrupts or signals, well, both of them are handled in a specific way, and that's defined by the signal handler. Next, both interrupts and signals can be masked, as we said, and in that way, we can ignore them. And finally, as we previously discussed, these types of events can appear synchronously or asynchronously. So we have some analogy between these two contexts again.